Okay, so this is what I'm going to do for rotoscoping in Photoshop. I'm going to start by clicking open and I've got my video that I want to work from. You can also use a still image. I'm going to open it. So I've got that in here. If I want, I can hit play. I can see the ants moving around. So what I want to do is make some changes because I'm going to be applying an effect to each one of these frames. That's a lot of work. Right down here at the bottom, it says 29.97 FPS, frames per second. So in one second, I have 29 things I have to do to each one of these frames. It's way too much work. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to change this. I'm going to go down to where it says set timeline frame rate. Click on that. And I'm going to change it to 12. I'm going to hit OK. Now, so that was our hidden little area there. Now you can see 12 frames per second. So that means that I only have to do 12 things instead of 29. So what I want to look at now is this video. You can see the whole video in this just sort of area right here, timeline. I'm going to do a zoom in. Basically, it doesn't change the length of film at all. It just lets me zoom in. I'm going to go all the way to the right. So I'm going to now, do you see it? This, every time I move it, it kind of pops over. That's a frame. When I had it really small like this, it was really hard to tell where the frames were, each one I was doing. So just for ease, I'm just going to start by showing you each one of these and how it pops in each frame, just so it's easier to see. Okay, so I'm going to start at the beginning here. Now there's a couple things that I want to consider. Do I want to draw over this and then get rid of the film when I'm done? If that's the case, here's what you need to do. You're going to go up to your layer and you're going to go to where it says video layers. Then you're going to go to where it says new blank video layer. Okay, so what they did is it created a new layover here. And I'm, just so you can see, I'm going to shrink this down here. Okay, so you can see it automatically put it side by side. And if I try and put this over it, it's just going to put it in a different order. I want to put one above the other because I'm going to be layering and drawing on top of the film. So in order to get that to work, I have to take this out of this little group here. So I'm going to just pick this up and throw it out here. All right, now they're separate and I can put them like this together. Okay, so now let's say I want to draw on here. So I've got just drawing some yellow. It's lovely. Now I'm drawing on this one so it doesn't destroy this film down here. So I'm drawing there and I want to go to my Next one, and let me fan this way out again. Go to my next frame, boom, there's my next frame. But then I can't see what I just did. So there's this thing called onion skin. So if I click on that little hidden feature again, and I go to un enable onion skins, you'll see that it kind of makes it a little darker. You can see it here, see it there. Can you see the faintness of that color? So what I'm gonna do is just so you can see it a little bit better, I think I'll change my color or something just so we can see it. I'm going to draw on here again, and then I'm going to go to the next frame. All right, so I'm in another, a new frame. This just means it's the hidden frame behind it. This is not actually on this frame. It's just the visual, so I can see what I just did. So I go to the next frame, and let's say I wanted to pick up where I left off and do more squiggles. Next frame, and I want to pick up where I left off. So that's what the advantage to onion skin is. Disadvantage of it's really kind of hard to, to see what's going on just because of the darkness. And there are ways that we can change that, but it's still, it's still hard to see. If you wanted to go back so you can see your film, just unclick, enable onion skins, and you can see what it looks like. Now I'm going to come up a couple more frames here. All right, that was the last one. Now, I can also do some destructive um, changing to my film. So right here, I'm on this layer. This was, I'm going to turn this eyeball off here so you can actually see. So if I wanted, I can have this squiggly thing going on. But I'm going to turn this back on, and I'm going to come to this layer. I have to be on this layer if I want to do anything with filters. If I try this one, the filters won't work. I'll show you. So if I go to filter and I want to go to my filter um, gallery here, it says it couldn't do it because it's empty because it's just a, a blank, blank thing right there. You don't have to, you know, do anything to it. You could draw on it, but you can't make any changes. So I'm going to click on here. I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to go to my filter gallery. All right, now this is where you can mess around and do some interesting 
distorted features. So let's say I like that. So you can see there, there's another one. I'll go to another frame. So I might want to do another, another one. So let's see. Maybe this time I will, let's see with the fresco and we'll just mess around with the textures and stuff. So you can see there's the first one, there's another one. Let's go to another frame. And you can change any kind of colors. Filters are, are a fun way to do it. Like this rough pastels or this underglazing or kind of sort of a watercolor smudge, whatever it is that you want. Um, and remember, you can also change, you can do some distortions too, like that. So now I've got a, several frames here that are different from each other. Okay, so I'm going to come back down to this part right here where I'm kind of going to zoom back out so I can see everything. Now, I only did a, a short amount right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and pull this over. I'm going to see where my last frame was first. Let's see. And that's the last thing I did. So I'm going to pull this right up to it. Okay, that, that way you're just telling it what part of the film you want to work from. So I'm going to hit play. You got it. Let's start over here. So we've got our, our framing done here. Now let's say I looked at this go, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing ever. I wish I didn't do this to this frame. Okay, so as long as you, whatever frame you want to change, okay, so let's say this one's awful. What I can do is I can go up to my layer and I can go to my video layers and I can hit restore frame and it brings it back. So then I go, oh, actually, I really wanted to do, you know, something different in there. I wanted to, I don't know, let's, let's see what we can do. Let's, let's pinch. Let's distort this one. Let's see if there's anything we can do to kind of make it a little crazier. See, I just pinched it. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of different things going on. So there is a way to change it. So if you make a mistake, you can definitely restore that frame. You can't restore individual things as easily, but you can restore that frame. Okay, so you're finished. Um, if you want to just have where you drew on it, you're going to um, just turn that off so you can see whatever you want to see, or you want both, which most of you will. You'll want to keep your original video there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File. I'm going to hit Export. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to render video. X file, export, render video. Okay. What I would do is I would change this to like Ant Rotoscope or Rotos, Roto or something like that so I know what it is. Um, I want this to be QuickTime. So make sure that changes to QuickTime. It probably by default will be this. So change that to QuickTime for what we're going to do. Keep the document size at what it started at. Okay. Um, the frame rate should be the 12 frames per second as before and it make sure you know where it's going to go to your desktop so I'm going to hit render depending on how long your video is it will render there's my ant roto it's going to open and convert and here we are you can see what you've done okay so you've got your video there you go